Now I would like to recognize Ms. Jessica Graves, the state winner of last year's Excellent in Ag Award to announce the winner of this year's Excellent in Ag Award. Ms. Jessica. Good evening, I'm Jessica Graves, the state's winner of last year's Excellence in Agriculture Award. I'm delighted to be here with you this evening to announce this year's winner of the Excellence in Agriculture Contest. This contest seeks to out to recognize outstanding young agricultural professionals in our state for their dedication to agriculture, leadership skills, and Farm Bureau involvement. The winner of the Excellence in Agriculture Award will receive a zero-turn lawn mower, compliments of Southern Ag Credit, $1,000 compliments of Southern Farm Bureau Casualty Insurance, $500 compliments of Southern Farm Bureau Life Insurance Company, a Yeti cooler, compliments of Mississippi Farm Bureau Insurance Company, and an expense paid trip to compete in the AFBF Young Farmers and Ranchers Excellence in Agriculture Contest held at the American Farm Bureau Annual Convention in Nashville, Nashville Tennessee during the January 2018. Please turn your attention to the screen to meet this year's regional winners. Our first nominee is Peyton Pfizer from Bolivar County. Peyton is a field sales representative for Bayer Crop Science. As a field sales representative, I get to call on distributors, uh, growers, consultants, helping them making decisions about what varieties to plant, what chemicals to use, uh, how to solve problems that they encounter throughout the day. I have three counties. I have Bolivar, Washington, and Sunflower counties. Peyton participates in a program that Bayer developed called the Advocacy Program. The Advocacy Program is a program that Bayer started uh, really to answer some of the criticisms from the anti-GMO groups, anti-neonics. It's really just teaching us how to have the conversation with people that may not be informed about what we do and why we do it and uh, some of the positive things about what GMOs are bringing to the market as well as how neonics are helping us make better crops and uh, just kind of having that conversation with people that, that maybe don't realize uh, all the positive sides. We hear all the negative side, but there's a whole lot of positives that come as well. His work with this program really helps with the battle of what he thinks is the biggest issue facing agriculture. I think that's the biggest, biggest problem we got is the organic movement. Uh, I think that's the biggest thing that's going to hurt us or, or has the potential to hurt us. Um, a lot of insecticides, other chemicals that we're trying to bring to market now or have brought to market and then had them removed later on. People are attacking those and, and not being informed about what they're really doing. So um, I would say that's the biggest thing that's working against us. And even though Peyton doesn't farm himself, he's really gotten into the Young Farmers and Ranchers program. I really enjoyed getting to know a lot of people in that industry. Um, so for me, it was neat because, you know, sometimes I think about agriculture only as row crops because that's what we do here mostly. Uh, but in the young, young farmers and ranchers, you got cattlemen, um, you got people doing bee stuff, uh, you know, it's all kind of produce. Uh, I know there's a, a big produce farmer that I've met through that. So just networking, um, I think that's the biggest thing. And also uniting as one just to try to get people out there and uh, let them understand what Farm Bureau is about, what farmers are doing, um, and that, you know, that farms are still very family oriented. Most of them are family owned. Um, that everybody thinks it's corporate America owned farms, but really uh, families are still doing a lot of everything out there. Our next finalist is Crystal Graves from Ripley. Crystal serves as the box office and events manager at Crossroads Arena in Corinth. They host a lot of ag related events at the arena, including the county fair. We actually have a three day fair this year and what we're setting up for in the barn is for our cattle show. We have 185 head pre-registered so it's actually one of the largest county fairs in our area. And this is basically what a lot of people in this area look at it as, is kind of the last show before we all get ready to go to state fair. So we're setting panels and getting everybody's stalling spaces assigned and shavings placed in the barn for them. Crystal has been involved with agriculture her whole life, starting when she was six years old. And it was just because I decided that my, if whatever my brother could do, I could do. So he was showing cattle starting and so I just decided that I could do the same and I showed cattle throughout um, all the way until I was 21 
um, on the state and county national levels. I also was very involved with 4-H and FFA and my FFA involvement um, as a state FFA officer for two years is what really rooted my agricultural uh, ties. She's also a former contestant in the statewide discussion meet. It was a really eye-opening experience because I've got to sit across the table with people that, you know, you think in Mississippi agriculture everybody's the same, but that's not the case. There's a lot of diversity to our agriculture in our state. Then I was fortunate enough to be selected to be on our Young Farmers and Ranchers Committee for the state. Um, I chair our counties as well as I'm also the county women's chair and all of that happened in a span of about six months but it's not an experience that I wouldn't trade that experience for anything in the world because being the women's chairman has probably given me more opportunities to do what I love to do and that's to teach others about ag. And that's what Crystal believes is one of the most important issues facing agriculture. I absolutely know for a fact that the public does not know enough about how their food gets here and the things. People don't even understand that their clothes is something that's produced. I am very fortunate to have grown up in an area that is, prides itself in educating young people. And I've tried to continue that with other young people, but ag literacy is probably the forefront of what we're doing today. Ag literacy is really just telling your ag story. Um, telling them about what you do when you get up in the mornings. Do you get up and go to the barn and feed cattle? Do you get up and go to the barn and check chicken houses? Whatever it is, whatever is your story, it's about putting that passion and drive that you have for it into it so that you can tell others about it. Which brings her back to her experiences with 4-H and FFA. That's what kind of developed and helped me to see that the things that I could do as an adult would influence a young person because there were so many that influenced me. Next, we have David and Kelly Russell from Starkville. David is an Extension Associate at Mississippi State University in the Plant and Soil Sciences Department, working in weed control. We evaluate a lot of the herbicides that a lot of people use in forages um, and hay production for livestock. Um, those that are labeled for that type of agriculture, we evaluate those in multiple crop settings on multiple uh, weed species, um, many of which we may not already have the answer to, uh, many of which producers continue to see problems with in their field across the state. Uh, our job is to evaluate not only the herbicides, but just the general weed management for that specific production so that they get the most profit out of their livestock operation. It just never ceases to amaze me. And the reason that they do things uh, is always unique, whether it be because their grandparents did it 75 years ago, um, or they heard something on the news, you know, that they picked up some little tidbit of information that they can add to their farm. It's always just really interesting to see producers and uh, their operation and how they uh, conduct their operation. Kelly is a graduate assistant in the Department of Sociology doing rural community research. My interest is specifically in rural sociology. So I'm interested in communities, agriculture, and people, and the combination of any of the three. And my specific research uh, for my thesis and then later my dissertation is on farmers' perspectives on the resources that they have access to, which ones they use, why they use them, and then um, scenarios that arise from that. Kelly does presentations and lectures for students and the general public. Food is a popular topic, so if it is framed as in food, where does your food come from, who makes your food, anything of that like, people, um, just the general public, are very interested in learning about that, and so I have spoken to different groups such as um, local food policy groups that maybe um, have been started out of a farmer's market to farmer's market groups to food um, advocacy groups that are usually um, small farmers that have banded together in their local community and aren't really associated with any of the larger agriculture organizations that I, you know, David and I work with um, in our family. David and Kelly agree that misperceptions of agriculture is one of the biggest issues facing the ag industry. We think that that's why it's crucial that not only um, farmers you know, share that message with the general public, but also are informed and active um, in not only local politics, but state and national as well. 
Uh, prior to going to graduate school, I worked for four years as a congressional staffer. And I truly enjoyed that experience and it was extremely enriching. I did all of Congressman Allen Nunley's casework for North Mississippi on agriculture. And, you know, farmers have a lot of small and large needs that are met by different groups and some of them are you know extension like David works for but a lot of them are needs that um, really are remedied through political decisions and so I think that we need the general public to understand why certain laws are the way they are and how that not only benefits a farmer but benefits them and their own family and you know is able to put food on their table. I think it's crucial that farmers share their story. Again, like Kelly said, many of them aren't willing to get in front of a camera or a group of producers or even those who may not be familiar with farming to share their story because it's those farmers and the like that have the passion for what they do. I think the majority aren't really in it for the money per se as much as it is the passion that they have for what they do. The Russells have two children three-year-old Ava, and Silas, who's one. Next, we have Matt McGowan from Rankin County. Matt grew up on a farm outside of Carthage in Leak County. I uh, grew up on a poultry farm, uh, and we also had a beef cattle herd. We had laying houses, so uh, it, for those that are unfamiliar with laying houses, it's, it's kind of the equivalent to the, to the dairy farming industry where it's a 24-7, no vacation type deal two houses producing about 16,000 eggs a day that we were having to pick up by hand. And, uh, you know, we keep that, we'd keep that uh, flock of birds for about a year. So obviously whenever you, you change out birds, clean out was all, always a big deal. Nowadays, Matt is a retail account manager for DuPont Crop Protection, which offers a complete portfolio of herbicides, fungicides, and insecticides, all geared toward helping farmers make a better crop routine day at the office for me. Uh, I do work out of a home office and uh, usually spend, you know, 30 to 45 minutes there in my office before I leave out each morning. But I would say probably three out of the five days of the week, I'm headed toward the South Mississippi Delta uh, to go see a dealer. Uh, I'll also spend some time in the Hattiesburg, Magnolia, South Mississippi areas where we have peanuts and sprinkled in soybeans and fruit and vegetables. But uh, I'm typically going to see retailers and uh, talking business, talking about sales of, of DuPont products, talking about what's going on out into the field, what, uh, what are the consultants saying, are we finding worms, are we finding disease, is there anything in particular, any hot spots that we need to talk about, are there resistance issues in the weeds that we're, that, uh, that we're seeing out there. So daily basis I'm meeting with retailers and we're talking about the issues that they're facing uh, in trying to get product on the ground with their growers. In addition to that full-time job, Matt also runs a small cattle herd. Probably one of my greatest passions is I do have a few registered Black Angus cattle that, uh, uh, that I have on my father-in-law's farm. He's been gracious enough to, to help me grow a small herd. Uh, Will McMillan's his name, and he's, uh, he's a third-generation Angus producer, and uh, he's, uh, he's kind of taken me under his wing and showed me, shown me the ropes in the Angus market, and uh, I, like I said, I've grown a small Angus herd. We uh, primarily market uh, registered Angus bulls, and we'll sell a few heifers each year, but uh, that's something that, uh, that I take a lot of pride in. Matt also serves on the Farm Families of Mississippi Steering Committee. Agriculture in the state of Mississippi is an economic engine and uh, the general public sometimes forgets about that, that uh, they forget that we need agriculture for all three meals a day, for all the clothes that we wear, uh, even, you know, riding to work in your vehicle, you don't realize that, you know, agriculture plays a big part in, in everything that we touch in our lives. And uh, you know, Farm Families of Mississippi does a great job of just bringing that awareness to the, to the general public and, and really to the public outside of that ag community. And our winner of the Young Farmers and Ranchers Excellence in Agriculture Award for 2017 is Austin Smith of Perry County. Austin is an instructor of biology and microbiology at the Jones County Junior College. This is the ninth year teach some freshman general biology and those are always fun to deal with. I also teach uh, microbiology and that's pretty much a sophomore level course. I have a lot of students that are majoring in uh, ag related fields but we also have a lot of health related professions, uh, students that are in health related professions that are in that course. 
As an instructor, Austin has the opportunity to present the positive aspects of farming and agriculture to the students as it relates to the subject matter. I'm always intrigued by the opinions or the mindset of students that come in, even from rural counties in Mississippi, as to their perception of, of farming and what goes on, the real life, the real life, real life aspects of a agriculture. So, any time that I can integrate these topics into the classroom, I like to do that. I, I've always found it interesting to take uh, my freshman students or even my microbiology students and and talk to them about what a GMO is. You know, tell them tell them the, the science behind it, actually how it's developed. You know, I like to go through the science of, of how it's actually made and why it's really not that weird. You know, it's it's actually just using um, it's it's a biotechnolo biotechnological application. In addition to his teaching career, Austin is an integral part of his family's honey farm. We operate uh, Smith's Honey Farm with about 1,100 colonies. We're in three counties in South Mississippi and one county in North Mississippi. The foremost reason is an opportunity to continue honey production after the honey production has pretty much has ended in South Mississippi. We go into a dearth in South Mississippi in early July, and so we uh, take bees to Knoxby County, Mississippi, and. Uh, can to produce honey off of the soybeans and cotton that are in uh, Knoxby County. And so we're uh, kind of got hives distributed or placed right there in the Black Prairie region. The honey is brought in from the fields and held in a room until it's needed in the processing facility. The processing facility uh, pretty much has an uncapper and then you have an extractor. So the extractor of course is going to spin the honey out of the combs. From there it goes into a separator that pulls out any leftover wax. And then it goes into a bulk tank in the back of the shop and in the bulk tank we are going to put it in, in drums. And so it stays in drums until we either sell it wholesale or we take in, and put it in our bottlers and we bottle it ourselves for a product that we provide to customers and we sell in grocery stores and we sell some uh, what you call fruit stands or produce markets everything like that. Austin says that the strength of Farm Bureau is the way that it brings farmers from all parts of agriculture together for the common good. It goes back to the, the idea that we're all working together and we're all in this together. Farm Bureau is not to try to make the catfish producer any better than the beekeeper. It's, it's to keep them, keep everybody producing, keep everybody uh, in business. You know, these policies are developed are not to make any one better than the other. Austin has been involved with the County Farm Bureau for about seven years and is currently serving as Vice President. Yeah, I served on the uh, wife and our state wife and our committee for uh, a two-year term. And uh, that was a great experience because I got to learn, I got to meet so many uh, different producers and learning what they do and they got to learn what I do and that was uh, definitely a great experience. It's something I um, encourage those that are willing to be on that committee, I always like to encourage them to take that step and uh, to do that. And so, please welcome to the stage our 2017 Young Farmers and Ranchers Excellence in Agriculture Award winner, Austin Smith. Austin, we're really proud of you and what you've uh, done so far to represent Mississippi and we wish you luck. We wish you the best, Austin. We know that you'll do great. Hey, Austin, good luck in Nashville and represent Mississippi well. Good luck, Austin. Didn't know if I was supposed to make uh, take a picture or make remarks first. I'm so honored to have the privilege to um, represent Mississippi Farm Bureau as uh, the 2017 Excellence in Ag uh, Award winner. Um, I have had the opportunity to become involved in this uh, organization several years ago, and I cannot um, um, begin to explain how much this uh, the process. Um, that, that Farm Bureau uh, goes through and, 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 and what that process has allowed me to, um, to help my commodity and everything like that. Um, I want to thank the sponsors. I want to thank my family for my support. I want to thank my uh, regional manager, Chris Shivers, uh, because he has definitely pushed me uh, whenever at times that I did not want to um, fill out the application, everything like that. Um, 
but again, I am so honored to, um, uh, to, to represent Farm Bureau, and, and, um, and, I, and I truly thank all the friends and uh, supporters that I have made in this organization. Thank you so much.